And what is going on, hockey fans? It is, as always, your host, Neil Villapiano of NHL Weekly. And we welcome you to a very special World Junior Championships edition of NHL Weekly. We are going to preview this year's World Junior Championships. We'll be starting up next week. And to help me with the preview, it is with great pleasure that we welcome on THP Ed Manager and also my co-host for a lot of live watch longs here on the YouTube channel as well, Kyle Manifold. Kyle, how are you doing today, my friend, in what should be a really fun episode previewing this year's WJC? I'm good. I'm uh, stressed for Christmas being like three days away, but I'm waiting for Boxing Day to be here so we can kind of get that World Junior Fever back under uh, back underway. So it's exciting. <laughs> It's an exciting time for, for hockey fans in general because you get to see some international hockey and more importantly, you get to see a lot of the future of the NHL. A lot of these guys that you're seeing are guys that in a year or two are going to be top draft picks and you really kind of get to evaluate you know, what guys might interest you. And also there are players that have already been drafted that you get an opportunity to see on an international stage and, and uh, just look at what they're capable. Just get an opportunity to see more more uh, time to see how they do and, and more playing time in general. So we have a really, really awesome episode for you. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to go through every single team, kind of go through their roster as uh, Kyle's put up this absolutely sick graphic that we have that we've been using to promote. We are going to be doing live watch alongs, by the way, here on the THPN YouTube channel for uh, a bunch of these games. Kyle's already got two that he's going to be doing. I'm going to sign up for a couple as well. On a personal note, in case you don't know, I'm actually going to be covering Team Canada for the hockey writers this year. I'm going to be doing a lot of the game takeaways, so I'll be keeping an eye on uh, the defending the defending champions. And there's a lot of interesting storylines. I think there's probably an interesting storyline with every single team that's playing in these WJC. So really, really excited. So Kyle, I think it's time that we kind of just jump right into uh, this, and we'll start with Group A. We'll start with Group A, and we're going to start. Okay with the defending champions and that is team canada who comes in honestly and truly you could argue that this might this this roster might be better than last year's roster and it's led by obviously macklin celebrini who is projected right now to be the number one overall pick in next year's draft and uh it's really going to be interesting to see who ends up with the the lucky number one overall pick a guy that you could definitely um he has the makings to be a star and a guy that you could truly build around. Um, also, shout out really quickly to DraftKings for giving us the odds. Use promo code THPN when you sign up for DraftKings. Uh, Canada is at a plus 250 to win the gold medal, and obviously they did win it last year. Projected third, though, kind of an interesting thing, even though I, I would argue that their roster is very, very good. And Kyle, my question to you is this, and I'll give my answer as well. Sure. What do you think of the roster as a whole? And other than Celebrini, who is a guy that stands out to you as a guy to keep your eye on other than um, the projected number one overall pick in next year's draft? Well, this was projected before Matthew Portress was assigned to Team Canada. So I'd imagine yeah. those odds maybe change a little bit. This was like about a week prior. Um, so he adds a lot of lethal value to that offense. And I think really the question again for Canada this year, especially last year too, was um, how was the goaltending performance going to play out? I think Thomas Millich was uh, Canada's star goaltender last year for, for the Canadians on their route to, uh, to gold. And I think that question is going to be brought up again this year because they do have a good rotation of goaltenders, but there's no number one solidified goaltender. So in a matter of a short window of games in the round robin and close to the medal round, you got to figure out who your number one star is going to be in net. I think that's going to be the, the biggest uh, thing to watch for for the Canadians this year. Mm -hmm. And as well, too, defensively, um, Maverick Lamoureux, who was originally a, a top uh, first-round pick in last year's draft by, I believe it was Arizona, who a lot of people are going to put their eyes up for. He's a big kid, tall guy. And um, I think another guy, too, who actually, is, as Canada's currently playing in Switzerland right now in an exhibition game, right. uh, a guy who's been playing well, too, is um, Savoie and Owen yeah. Pack. So two guys to mention there as well, too, to keep your eye out for. It's... Um, it's interesting, again, for this Canadian team, there is no Conor Bedard. There's no star player. Maybe Matthew Poitras is going to be that quote-unquote star player offensively for this team. But I think the, what you have to watch for is the goaltending this year and see how that kind of plays out. 
Yeah, I, and again, you, you mentioned Matthew Poitras, who a couple days ago, I think it was actually back on Monday, it was announced that he was going to be leaving the Bruins and going to play for Team Canada. I definitely found that to be somewhat of an interesting decision, but mm-hmm. I think that because Poitras' playing time has kind of decreased over the last couple of uh, couple of weeks, even though he got up to a really hot start when the season got underway, uh, I think the management for Boston just feels that this would be a good opportunity for him to get some more playing time, really kind of help him that way, and then give him a little bit more confidence by the time he comes back to the Bruins. And really, I think for, for Boston, it might not be a critical loss because they are still playing really good hockey right now, and I think this will be good for him. The guy for me, and you mentioned his name, but the guy for me that really I want to keep my eye on is Owen Beck, the former uh, second round pick uh, by the uh, Montreal Canadiens back in 2022. Um, You know, he's only, obviously, you know, he only played one game last year, hasn't really played a lot in the NHL, has been spending most of his time playing for Peterborough in the OHL. But this is a guy that I think ends up being more of a leader um, for this team. He's kind of one of those guys that has a little bit more experience. He's played on the international stage a couple of times. I think this might be his second go around at the World Juniors. if I'm not mistaken. And he is a guy that is not the biggest dude, but has a really, really, really good shot. And I think that Canada is going to rely on his offense a ton throughout this tournament. And other than Celebrini, I think Owen Beck has the making to be like one of the main catalysts for this Canadian um, machine going into the the world junior. So yeah, I mean, this is a team that is very, very deep. But I think the big question is going to be their goaltending and who solidifies as that number one guy who is going to be the one that's really going to carry that team and you know generate the success that they need. And uh, if Canada does struggle, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the goaltending that was the reason that they're struggling. So, well, we'll see. We'll see. But again, Team Canada, of course, is going to be one of the top dogs going into this tournament, not just in their group, but certainly overall when it comes to them having the odds to potentially go back to back and win another gold medal. So now we will shift against sticking with Group A. We are now going to shift to another I think a team that could definitely make a lot of noise in this tournament and maybe surprise the people, and that is Team Sweden, who comes in at a plus two, uh, 225 projected to finish second overall in the entire tournament or second in the um, second in the group, or is this the tournament projection? That was the projection for second uh, total tournament product projection. Total. Yeah. So they're projected yeah. to they're projected right now to finish with the silver medal and finishing in the uh the gold medal game. Last year they did finish in fourth losing in the bronze medal game so they kind of went out and they they had a really tough end to the tournament losing back-to-back games having an opportunity to go to uh the gold medal game and, and ended up not even getting a medal. So certainly they want to uh they want to redeem themselves. Axel Sandin Palika is the guy to watch in this one. And I think when I look at the Sweden team, I think this team that has a good amount of experience. I really the, the guy that stands out to me kind of personally is the Ottawa Senators goaltender Kevin Ridler, who again mm. Not a guarantee that he's going to end up being the starter. We got Hugo Havilid and also Melker Thielen as well. Thielen is an Arizona Coyotes draft pick. But again, Kevin Reitler is playing for the Dubuque Fighting Saints in the USHL. And it's a guy that is a young guy that really, really can grab the reins, I think. And again, Sweden, very similar to Canada. Not definitive in terms of who's going to be their number one guy in net. But I think overall, although they they've, they haven't looked great in their... Um, pre-tournament games. Um, I still think this is the team that could make a lot of noise again and maybe even go further than um, they went last year. And, and certainly the projection and DraftKings certainly feels pretty confident about that as well. Yeah, and I mean, it's a good group again, when you especially look at this, we'll, we'll go through it um, further. And recent history has shown that, you know, Sweden's been that team in group action, right? But they just haven't been able to perform on the metal stage. And I think there's just more, and, and Canadians know it, and the Americans probably know it as well too, is that there's more added pressure to when you're hosting the tournament, right? I think that's important to note that Sweden is hosting the tournament this year. They always show out too as well. And the last time that Sweden did host this tournament, they weren't even in the final. I think it was Finland and Russia who ended up being in the uh, in the final of that gold medal game the year they were in Sweden a couple of years ago. So right. it, it's more pressure. It's definitely something where you want, because they're not in Sweden as often as they are in Canada and in the U.S. So for me, it is more added pressure. Um, I still like the player to watch here for Axel Sandin Palika here. He was, again, a first-round pick in this past year's draft. And I, I, think the, I think the strength for me for this Sweden team is – 
they weren't able to add a lot in offensively into this camp. I think defensively, though, this structure um, is probably one of the best in this World Juniors this year. I think defensively, this is probably one of the better teams to look at. And um, it wouldn't shock me if Sweden does end up finding its way into the gold medal game this year. Yeah, and I think that they're a team that and, and and obviously again, you know, shout out to DraftKings for for sponsoring everything we do here at THP. And I think if you were to put down, because I know a lot of people don't always like to place bets on the overall favorite and the more the guys that you know the easy bets. I like I'm the type of guy that likes to put bets down on teams that could very well that get, certainly projected wise can finish high and maybe go further than that. I think Sweden is a team that you definitely could put some money down. Um, as a sure. team that could go all the way and maybe, and who knows, playing in their backyard could potentially make a long run. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work out when you're playing in your own home country and you have all that pressure. Sometimes it's exactly what you need. I wouldn't, you know, let's be honest. Every game that Sweden plays in this tournament is going to be packed to the brim, regardless of who wow. they play. It's going to be a fun, it's going to be a big time. <laughs> and I think back Kyle to a couple of weeks ago when the NHL was in Sweden and you had like guys like William Nylander playing and everything. Those those fans in Sweden they came out. I mean that that that, that yeah. those games sold out every single night, and so I would expect the same thing here. And I'm really curious with the much larger ice because again over in Europe the ice is a lot bigger, a lot wider. I want to see how some of these European teams do with knowing that a lot of them have that experience of playing in the in with that ice, and how some of these North American teams. And when I say some, I mean. United States and Canada yeah. um, in that situation. but To quickly mention that, though, they were just at intermission, too, with Canada and Switzerland. And one of the guys, I think it was either Beck or Savoie, because one of them scored in the first period, they mentioned that right away. They said, yeah, it's adjustment for us because it is bigger ice. And so they were just talking about that at their first intermission. So a lot of these guys, that's why these pre-tournament games are important because they need to get comfortable with the ice right away. For sure, for sure, and I think uh, I think it's good that they're having these pre-tournament games for a lot of the, for both Canada and US, U.S. to get comfortable. And also, let's just be clear as well that there are players on every single country that also play in North America that have to readjust themselves to playing on a wider ice. Which I actually have argued that playing on a wider ice is harder to adjust to than playing on a smaller ice. In, in my in my, oh, yeah. opinion. I agree. A lot more guys go over to Europe, and all of a sudden they're like. I have so much more room to do what I need to do, and I'm not used to that. So now I have to find a way to make to to use that to my advantage. And so, but talking about Sweden, a team that really, really could make a deep run. I think that they have the roster to do it. Again, I want to see what the goaltending is all about when we get underway. So yeah. uh, let's move over now to another interesting team, and that is. Finland, who is projected right now to finish in fourth overall at plus 500. Last year, they finished in fifth, so they were not able to obviously medal last year. And the player to watch is Consta Hellenius. I think I'm saying that right. Yeah, I Hellenius, yeah. Want to, yeah, Hellenius, who uh, certainly is a guy that you want to keep around. Again, he is not drafted. He is a, Kyle, this is, this is how old we are. He is a 2006 kid. Oh this my God! Don't say that. He was born in 2006, and uh, he's a center right winger. Currently from Yo I'm going to say it wrong. Yolavar Yolajarvi, Finland. He's currently playing in Liga, which is the top uh, professional league over in Finland. Five foot eleven, 176 pounds. He is actually the second. Um, with the, he's tied for the second lowest weight of any player. Uh, this That's wild. Season. But wow. Uh, and actually, this might sound very biased, but the guy that I want to watch other than Hellenus is Lenny Haminaho, the Devils, um, New Jersey Devils draft pick. Uh, he's currently playing in Liga right now with Asat, and he has, even though he had an injury earlier this year, he has been lighting up Liga. He is one of their top scorers on that right side. Really, really generates a lot of offense. Has some good amount of experience. He's he's one of the better you know scoring wingers in Liga right now at a very young age. He's two thousand four kid. Um, this Finnish team to me, my problem is this: a lot of offense, not a ton of defense, and that's where I think is gonna. That's where I think I have a I have a feeling that they're gonna actually finish lower than they're projected. I, I don't mm. know how low, but this is a team that, especially with how tough Group B Group A is, that they might they might struggle a bit in in, in this year's tournament. I mean. They're going to get it tested right away on Boxing Day when they get Canada, right? And you're right. I think defensively, they're a little bit more on the weaker side of things. 
Offensively, though, I love Costa Hellenius. I think uh, just this, like you mentioned, the size of him. Like he's 5'11", 176. He's clearly a quick guy, though, too, right? So he, right. he's certainly a guy I'm going to watch for. Um, and you're right. I think Finland's – but for me, I think with Finland, and you're right, like a lot of the times with Finland's success in the past couple of years – Sometimes these Finnish players, this is their coming out party, right? We saw it with Sebastian Ajo. We saw it with Patrick Laine all the way back in the uh, in the late, uh, I think it was like 2016 or whatever it may be, the late. <laughs> it sounds old. Um, but this is a lot of the time, sometimes the Finnish is coming out party for a lot of these World Junior guys in order to help their draft stock even more. So you're right. Finland feels like it could be one of those teams where they either make a deep run or they're out in the quarterfinals. So Right. And they're going to get tested early on because I think it's Canada. And then I think they get Sweden right away afterwards. Right away. Mistaken, but it, it, it's going to be a tough test early on for this Finnish team. And that's going to set the momentum for this tournament, for this team, depending mm -hmm. on the outcomes of those games. I think for them, if they're able to to get some points, maybe even get an upset win against either Canada or, uh, or Sweden, I think that puts them in the driver's seat to get – uh, beyond the group stage and into, you know, the, uh, the, the metal rounds. And I think that really it's going to, it's going to come down to is Finland going to want to try to outscore their opponents and play one of these high scoring games, or are right. they going to try to find a way in their system to kind of create more of a structure? Um, should also mention, by the way, Kyle saw this, uh, this morning found it interesting. Finland has the most NHL drafted players on their roster. They have 13 guys who have been drafted, uh, which is pretty remarkable when you think about it. Seattle Kraken actually have three different guys that they have drafted that are playing for Team uh, Team Finland. So, And especially with a young franchise like Seattle, this is really where you get to see a lot of the um, – a lot of the youth. You got Nicholas Coco uh, or Coco, who is a goaltender uh, for, for Finland, who is projected right now to be the starter – for Team Finland. And then also when you go down the roster, you got Yanni Nyman, a right winger, uh, who was also drafted six foot four, 207 pounds for that That's guy. Crazy. And yet the young kid, he's already developed his body into being kind of NHL ready. So really curious to see. I don't know if experience is something that really Finland has. They have a lot of guys that play in the in Liga, which is, mm -hmm. you know, this is no joke of a league. It's a very, very good league with a lot of talent. Um, yeah. You don't believe me, go ask, um, I think Austin Matthews, if I'm not mistaken, played in Liga um, at one point. I think so, yeah. And then Capo Caco, I know, played in Liga before being drafted by the New York Rangers back in 2019. So there's a lot of experience there. So very curious. But I think for Finland mm – -hmm. That they might be uh, all one way or all the other. I think that's a. T I think that's what you're going to see from uh, from yeah. this team right now. So you know, again, Finland projected to finish in fourth, which would end up being a better finish than they did last year. But I want to see what the back end's all about. I, I want to see what they do, especially with those big matchups right away when this tournament gets underway. So now we will now look at another team that I think is going to be better than they were last year, but I still don't think they're getting out of the group stage. And okay. that is Team Germany. That's the team that I look at. They are projected to finish eighth and have a plus 10,000. Um, and last yeah. year they finished in eighth, and their top guy to watch for is Paul Meyer. And we kind of talked about this last night, Kyle, when we were we were talking, you know, during our live watch along. Um this is a Germany team that doesn't seem to have a ton of experience and a ton of talent. Again, they have three players on their roster that have been uh, that are draft picks. And other than that, this is a very, very young team that you're seeing this year from Germany. So I, I, I don't have a whole lot of confidence, but you know, again, anything can change when you look at it. The, the guy that I'm kind of keeping my eye on, really, when I look at when I look at this roster, is uh, Moritz Elias or Elias, um, who mm. actually is from Augsburg. He's he is the shortest player in the entire tournament at five foot eight, hundred seventy six pounds, and he oh plays God. in Germany's top league. He plays in the DL. <laughs> um, yeah, nineteen years of age. He is going to be wearing number twenty six for Germany. So he's a kid. And the reason that I want to I want to look at him is that I had a chance to watch a little bit of his tape and even though he hasn't done a ton in terms of putting up points, 
It's a guy that has traits that could be a really, really talented two-way forward. A guy who can use his speed and really become almost like a rat, really a pain in the pain in the rear end, you know, to face. So it's a guy I want to look at. But yeah, this is a Germany team that, you know, you just hope that finishes uh, above their projection. But it doesn't. It doesn't look that great. It feels like I. I, I think a man. It, it really feels like this team could even be relegated. Like that's how bad from what the insiders have been saying about this team and how they don't have the experience, how they don't have a lot of first round guys and let alone draft picks uh, on this team. Uh, it's it feels like especially being put in this group with the likes of Canada, with the likes of Finland and Sweden, you know, you are there with Latvia. And I think that's going to be the game to probably watch to see, you know, who's going to get possibly into that relegation best of three match. It's very doable that this Germany team could get relegated because of the fact that they're not not big up offensively. Goaltending wise has been an issue, and defensively, right. it's just not well structured going into this tournament. So, yeah, I, I think it's appropriate where they are projected right now, and I, I think it's very possible that there could be somewhat of an upset. And Germany needs to watch out to uh, to avoid relegation. That's probably their goal this year. For sure. And you don't want to be put in that situation because obviously if you get relegated, then it just becomes that much harder to get back into it. Because while there are teams, there are countries on the outside that are very close to making that push to get beyond where they are and getting into, you know, qualifying for the world juniors. And so yeah. it, it's tough because there are some really, really talented players in the NHL from Germany. Tim Stutzler is one, Leon Dreisaitl as well. Um, you know, these are guys that, you know, carry a lot of that, you know, that, that pride and in, in that, that, oh, Germany's been able to develop some talent. But again, I, I want to see them finish better than where they're projected. But it just, it kind of feels like right now that they are just hoping that they, like you said, that they don't, uh, they don't get relegated. I think that's really kind of the way you look at it. And I think if I'm not mistaken, is Nico Sturm the head coach for Germany? I don't know. I actually he? don't know. Because I remember Nico Sturm was the head coach for Germany in the Olympics. I remember that, but I don't. Or, um, I don't know. I have to look and I see. I got, I got to figure out who the coach of Germany is. So <laughs> they're an interesting. They are an interesting country because you like some people assume that they would have a lot of talent coming out of that. Right now, I think they're in a little bit of a funk in terms of having talent and, and developing it. It's not. It's always a knock on the country itself. It's just sometimes timing. that's timing. yeah. It's the timing and everything, but. You know, we'll, we'll certainly see what they do. So that's with Germany. Now we'll go to another team that I think, Kyle, you and I will agree that certainly needs to find a way to not get relegated. I think that is their main goal, to not get relegated and not get locked out. And that is Latvia. So Latvia comes into this projected to finish ninth, even worse than Germany, at a plus 50,000. They finished last year in ninth, and the guy that – his player to watch is Eric's Matieko or Mate Mate I think it's Mate Mateko, I think. Mateko. So again, you look at this roster. There is one. There are two players that are NHL prospects and, or have been drafted, and one of them is the captain Dons Los Melis, um, who is a Boston Bruins pick. The only other one is Sandis Vilmanis, who is uh, a Florida Panthers pick. So again, another team with not a lot of experience. There's a lot of guys that are not even playing professional hockey right now. A lot of kids playing in juniors right now. Um, really, you kind of look at this roster and you say, this is an awfully young roster. A lot of 2004 and 2005 uh, kids. And uh, I, I don't know, man. This is a team that really could either make some noise and maybe even finish better than they're projected or could certainly get relegated. And again, I think avoiding relegation has to be the goal if you're Latvia going into this. I think it's important to mention what we saw this past summer, though, at the World Championships, right, where Latvia was able to get its first medal in history, in a bronze medal, right? So I think that's right. something to, to note. And, like, to see the celebration, I don't know if you saw it, where the celebration's happening in the streets for their bronze medal, it looked like right. they won the World Cup. Like it was oh, yeah. the best, it was the best celebration I think I've seen in a long time. Like they were, they were going crazy. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I think you're right though. It's uh it's a team that always, you feel like you have to keep an eye on for now because anything can happen 
sometimes at these world championships, right? You bring a team to overtime, you bring a team to a shootout, then all of a sudden it becomes 50 50, right? Um, but you're right. I think for Latvia, again, it's to try to avoid relegation, to keep trying to find little ways to stay into it. And, you know, getting that odd win here or there. Again, it is a tough group if you're the likes of Latvia and Germany that we just mentioned. And um, I, I think the matchup that you're going to watch if you're Latvia is going to be that Germany game. So which one of these teams is going to get relegated? Do you think, like, that's one of those that, like, it's going to really determine it? I think so, because anything can happen in a best of three. And I think we're going to really see what happens with Norway, especially on the other side of it. We'll get to it. Um but it'll for sure determine who gets into that relegation match and who gets into the quarterfinals and possibly a chance to upset. For sure. So, yeah, that is Group A. I think, Kyle, really quickly before we move on to Group B, what are your yeah. overall predictions? Like if you want to – I don't know if you want to just like who yeah. are the guys – who are the teams that you think are going to end up coming out of this uh, out of this group and into and into the elimination rounds? So initially, I like Canada. I mean, I, I like Canada right away just because I think they're more of a a, a more well rounded overall team. Um, mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise me if they're adjusting to this new ice and that a team like Sweden or Finland can take advantage of that, especially in these games coming up and especially on Boxing Day where Canada gets Finland. Um, I still find, think they find a way to rebound and they find a way to get to get a chance to get the number one uh, seed in, in group A. So I like Canada first. I do like Sweden number two. I think they're going to feed off that home crowd. And I think that they've just got more talent in terms of them and Finland, if we're just kind of going down the pecking order. Yep. So right now I'll say Canada, Sweden, I think Finland gets three. I like Germany still to get number four. I think still Latvia has to find a way to, to grasp a little bit more talent, grasp a little bit more goaltending. Um, I think Germany's going to be fine. I think they'll 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 hit fourth and uh, and find a way to get into that quarterfinal. The only thing that I will do differently than than that is I'm going to flip. I think Finland finishes in second and Sweden finishes in third. And and the reason I say that is because with with Sweden, the the question that I have like legitimately is their goaltending. I really really don't know. Because, again, they're not entirely sure what they want to do on the back end. Um, and, and, again, they have a lot of inexperience in the back end. Well, whereas right. Sweden has a little bit more experience in that regard. And I think in this tournament sometimes you're going to have moments where a goaltender is going to have to really, really step up. And I think Finland, with the experience that they have, I think that they're going to find a way. They do have a lot of really, really good high-end talent. And so I think you could flip a coin between those two um, in terms of what goes on. So I'm going to go with – I'm going to go with Canada. I'm going to go Finland, Sweden, Germany, Latvia. I think that's right. the way I see it going on. So we'll see. And we might be oh. totally wrong and maybe Germany or Latvia, you know, it has it's normally how it goes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> has a crazy, but us as hockey fans who are not fans of these countries, sometimes we just want to see a team, you know, an, up, a, 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 an underdog find a way to, uh, to get through. So we'll see. We'll see. But I, I think Canada's, all but a lock, unless things really. I can't. I can't say they're a lock. I can't. These tournaments can be crazy sometimes. They, they can be. They lock. can be. Yeah. You know, Canada could get blown out in a game ten nothing. I mean, I've seen high scoring games. You want high scoring hockey games? Watch this tournament because you're probably going to see a couple of games like that. So it. that is Group A. So now we'll shift over to what I like to call the red, white, and blue group because literally every team in this group has red. What and every team except Switzerland has red and wh red, white, and blue. Whereas again, every team in this group has red and white, which I just noticed before we jumped. That on. wasn't confusing at all. And that wasn't <laughs> confusing at all. I'm sorry, but this is a really intriguing one because I would like to assume that there's four teams that are battling for the top two spots. Personally. So let's jump into it with a really intriguing team, and that is Team Czechia, who right now is projected to finish fifth in this tournament plus 1,600. Last year, they won they finished with the silver medal, losing to Team Canada. So this is a team that is battle-tested, has a lot of experience from last year, and I think has the makings that they could make a run to maybe even being the team that wins, that wins it all this year. I think that they can absolutely do it. And the player to watch is Edward Saleh or Sale. I, I, I think it's wanna... Saleh. Saleh, I think. Saleh, I think. Yeah, it's probably probably right. Another team with a lot of NHL ready players. Edward Saleh, by the way, is Saleh is a uh, Seattle Kraken pick, right winger, six foot two, 170. 
pounds. Now, the guy, though, that I am really intrigued about in this, uh, when I look at this roster, uh, Kyle, is Matei Masta Lariski. He's a left wing, right wing guy. You know, he's 18 years of age, six foot one, 170 pounds. He doesn't play on. A, he doesn't have a specific uh, team he plays for. He has been playing a lot with the Czechia um, under 20 team. So again, he is a guy that uh, is very, very fast, very fast, and has a very, very lethal wrist shot that I've seen. It's a guy that I think is going to be a catalyst for the offense of this Czechia team. This is in, in funny. It's so weird to say this because all these kids are incredibly young. This is actually somewhat of a veteran team, if you think about it, because again, there's a lot of players on this team that were on the team last year. And another guy that we by far not only the tallest goaltender but the tallest player in the tournament is Michael Harabel, the six foot six, two hundred nine goaltender who is a Arizona Coyotes draft pick, uh, currently playing in uh, the NCAA. They didn't really have the team up the top of my head, so he's been playing mostly in North America. So, Kyle, this is a Czechia team that could make a very deep run and a gold medal run if they uh, if everything goes to plan. Honestly. Well, they did it last year, right? Nobody saw them right. making it to the gold medal game. They did it last year, and now you give them another chance this year, especially on an ice that they're more familiar with. Um, it, it wouldn't surprise a lot of people in this group if, if Czechia does does win, end up winning the group. Um, I don't think it would shock any of us because of they're, they're just feeding off the momentum that they had last year, feeding off of the guys who are returning again. So they, I think that's important to note is that there are a lot of guys who are returning to this team um, this year. So, yeah, you're right. I, I think with a with, – ice that they're more comfortable with playing on and the momentum that they're carrying from last year. This is a team that could easily end up in that semifinal, depending on where they finish in that group. Um, I, I really do like their chances to find a way back into a, uh, back into a medal game this year. I think that they should, uh, even though the projection is that they're going to finish without a medal at all and not even make it there. I, I, I think that experience is going to play a big part for them in terms of these guys know what it took last year to get as far as they did and finish with a silver medal. And I think that they are hungry to make that run and complete the complete the journey and get themselves a gold medal. And so yep. I think Checky is a good bet, um, in my opinion, to uh, to, to project to, to make a deep run. I think this is a team that can really do a whole lot. But they will have to face uh, one of the deeper teams and one of the more talented teams, not just in their group, but certainly in this entire tournament. And that is, uh, in many ways, the good old U.S. of A., I think. And yeah. uh, when you look at the United States, as I'll really quickly kind of bring that up here, as um, Kyle will bring up the graphic in just a minute, this Hello. is a really, really interesting United States roster. This is a team that has a lot, a lot of talent, a lot of guys that uh, – are NHL drafted players, which I don't know if you would necessarily say that is a that is a a good thing or not, but it, it certainly it certainly goes a long way. You have only two players on this entire roster, Kyle, that are not um, drafted yet. Uh, you have Sam Hillbrat, the goaltender who's playing for the Barry Colts. He will be eligible to be drafted this year, and then also Zeev. Uh, view I am uh, the six foot six foot two 185 pound defenseman who's playing for the University of Denver and that really when I look at this roster is a really intriguing one obviously the guy that everyone's going to want to keep their eye on throughout this tournament is Cutter Gauthier alternate captain he was drafted by the Flyers fifth overall pick Kyle we actually did uh, the first round of the NHL draft and it wasn't that it was a – I think this was a really, really good pick by the Flyers. I mean, first of all, they had a really, really good first round, and I think they had a good draft. Regardless, they and did. getting yeah. Cutter Gauthier, who a lot of people even thought could be a top three pick, ended up dropping to five. So that's really interesting. The United States this year, Kyle, despite only getting the bronze last year, is projected to go all the way and win the gold medal at plus 200. Now, again, the goaltending, they haven't fully decided who they're going to go with. I think Sam Hilbrat ends up being the number one guy, and this will be a big tournament for him because, we, you know, goaltenders, they don't always get drafted in the first round. So mm -hmm. this is an opportunity for him to build up his draft stock on an international stage and have a lot more NHL scouts see him and then kind of go from there. But the guy 
The other guy that I really, really want to keep my eye on, again, going to sound totally biased, but it's the University of Michigan defenseman Seamus Casey. 5'10", 178 pounds. He was drafted in the second round, 46th overall by the Devils in 2022. He had a really, really good year being paired with Luke Hughes at Michigan last year in his freshman year, and now he's their top defenseman this year in helping Michigan having another big-time year and a year that they hope leads to a national championship and a guy who could certainly make a run if he can get some more points, make a run at the Hobie Baker Award for Player of the Year. But Overall, Kyle, it's a really, really deep and very talented um, United States team. I couldn't agree more. It's it's another guy I think that maybe you also forgot to mention, too, who was drafted very high, was Will Smith. And it feels Ooh. like he's going to be the catalyst. For San Jose season. Sharks pick, yep. San Jose Sharks pick, Will Smith, who feels like this is an opportunity for him to, again, it, it's, a, it's a real good chance to be on this stage to just improve the type of player that you are and to just show your – your coaching staff, if you've already been drafted, or the possible scouts, you know, for the upcoming draft this year, it's going to give Will Smith a big chance to kind of be the catalyst for this team, be some type of leader for this team, and uh, and as well too, like Cutter Gochi, I think fits in that category as well. So I, I think the only thing that I would say with the U.S. in in terms of um, their their chances at winning this year, I have them winning it this year. Spoiler alert, um, but. The thing that I'm kind of concerned with is a little bit the goaltending. I'm not sure how that's going to play effect, and I'll, I'll let you kind of get into that. I'm not sure how the goaltending is going to work out with this American team. Um, and, and I think it says a lot, too, in this tournament with the types of groups that you're in, right? So you're mm. in a group with a Czech team that not a lot of people had who made made it to the gold medal game last year. You're in it with Slovakia, who, in my opinion, is going to be a dark horse. And you got Switzerland and Norway, too. So I think playing up to the level of competition – could play a factor for this team, right? And I think that they still make it to a semifinal round. But if they get matched up with Sweden or Finland or Canada in a semifinal there, I'm, I'm curious to see how that'll go and in, in with the um, with matching like the competition, the competitive level that they have currently in the group that they're in. So I think that plays a little bit of a factor. However, I still think this is a very – I think this is the deepest team in the entire tournament. And you have to assume that you have to give them the best odds to win it because of how, how many first-round draft picks they have runs throughout this lineup you mentioned it too Seamus Casey too as well it's a well-structured defensive unit and um and I think goaltending you can maybe allude to it a little bit here but that would be my only question mark other than that there's no reason why this American yeah. team should not be in the gold medal game this year I think for them uh you look at how last last year ended um they had a lot of high expectations they were the defending champs going into last year's tournament and I think they got a little fat and happy and felt that they were going to run the table last year and they got punched in the mouth. And that's what happens in this tournament. The second that you think that you are the top dog and think that you're just going to easily brush through, this tournament is so unpredictable. All these guys are relatively the same age and are at the in talent level. A lot of these guys are at the same. And hockey is a magical, unpredictable sport. You do not know what can happen. Slovakia last year made a lot of really, really – Interesting noise last year. And then Czechia. Czechia made it all the way to the gold medal game last year. And nobody right. had it. So any team can be beaten at any time. I think for the United States, this is a team that wants revenge, that wants to redeem themselves from what happened last year. And they have arguably the most experience, if not some of the most experience of any team. And again, I'm a big fan of experience means a lot in this tournament. In this but one, again, yes. You mentioned the goaltending. The United States is still not sure what they want to do in terms of where they're going to go with this goaltending. I think you really that's something we really, really have to uh, to keep in mind. The one thing that I thought was kind of cool is Rutger McGordy actually ended up being named captain of the United States team. Oh, wow. uh, Winnipeg, Winnipeg Jets' first, overall, first round pick, uh, 14th overall back in 2022. The other thing that, again, I think shows you how talented this team is, most of these guys that were drafted are first round picks. First or second yeah. round picks. This is a team yeah. that they're not they're not to be taken lightly in any way, shape, or form. Um, the guy I, I will say this, I'll give you one hot take that I think is gonna is gonna surprise people. The guy who I think ends up finishing as the leading goal scorer for the United States is gonna be Jimmy uh Snuggerud from the first round pick, 23rd overall back at 2022 wow. St. Louis. Hmm. I I've seen him play before. And I really, really think he has a sneaky good shot that in tournaments That's like this could really actually do some damage. So I don't know. I just feel like that it's a hunch. It's not a anything other than that. But yeah. this is a really good United States team. 
Um, I want to keep my eye on that goaltending now. I think it really needs to be Agreed. looked at for sure. So now we'll shift over to Kyle and I both agree. This is the dark horse. This is the team that could really, really screw up this tournament and really yeah. make a lot of noise. And that is, uh, without a doubt, our favorite country on this network because we have so many of these people that are that that subscribe to us, and that is Team Slovakia, who, if you look at the talent that they've been able to produce over the last couple of years, even though Slavkovsky has been struggling, he's getting there. You have Simo Nemitz with the New Jersey Devils. The Slovakia had the top two overall picks in the draft two years ago. That shows right. you. Where this is going, this is a team that in the Olympics two years ago went and ended up winning the bronze medal in an upset over Sweden. That was a big deal for that country. And again, just like Latvia, when they won that bronze medal, the whole country was celebrating. I mean, it's a small – Slovakia is not a big country by any means. They are projected to finish where they finished last year at sixth place at plus 5,000. And then you got, of course, Dalvor Dvorsky. This is a this is an unbelievably talented kid right here. This is a guy that I think could be a tremendous NHL player when it's all said and done. I don't believe that they are going to finish six. I believe they're no going to finish more than that. Um, when I look at this roster, again, a lot of experience, a lot of, a lot of interesting names, a lot of guys that are going to be drafted in the next year or two. And I will say this. The guy that I'm like super, super excited about is Philip Messer, the right yeah. winger who was drafted by the Montreal Canadiens, 2004 kid. He's six foot, excuse me, 5'10, 176 pounds, currently playing in the OHL. He, like, this This is a fun roster, Kyle. Honestly, and true. This is a fun Slovakian team. I'm going to name a couple guys too. So you have Dalibor Dvorsky, who currently plays up in Sudbury. You have Samuel Honzek, who was the 16th overall pick by the Flames this year in the first round. You have, like you mentioned, Philip Messar, who's a Montreal Canadiens prospect. Martin Mishak, who was in the tournament last year, who proved uh, very useful and resourceful. Another guy, too, Adam Sikora, a New York Rangers draft pick who you have to keep your eye on. Um, defensively, the one guy I think you need to keep your eye on, Maxime Stryback, who was Stryback. also in the tournament last year. Stryback was on this team. He was a big reason why Slovakia, you know, did finish sixth, but a big reason why he had a good tournament with the with the talent they had around that team last year. And I think in goaltending, yeah, I think it's going to be Adam Gage in the uh, Chicago Blackhawks draft pick. Um, the roster is very, very high, though, and why why we put Dalibor Dvorsky here. Um, because it, he was gonna, I think he was a top 10 selection. I think he was 10th maybe in that, in, in that mm -hmm. first round uh, this year. This is a team that's going to do something in this draft or in this draft, in this tournament this year. Um, you could make a well-rounded argument that they end up winning this group. I don't think it would shock me if they do. Upsets happen in this tournament. If they find a way to beat the Americans, I, I don't think there's any reason why they couldn't finish first in this group. I think this is a real opportunity for this team, especially where you're not in a group with the likes of Canada, with the likes of Sweden, with the likes of Finland, right? You get stuck mm -hmm. in that group. I think it's going to be tough upsetting, but, you know, if you can match what you have with the Czechs and get through Norway and Switzerland, this team could really do something in this tournament. And I think if they give themselves, put themselves in a good position to get in that quarterfinal matchup, have a favorable matchup with a team in Group A who maybe underperformed a little bit and kind of catch them at a bad time, this team could easily find their way into this semifinal this year and uh, and be in a medal match. So I, I it would not surprise me if this team ends up winning a medal this year. I think they're that good. I think they're that deep, especially again with guys who grew up playing on this sort of ice, this wide open, this wide open ice. Yep. It's a really good team this year. And and it wouldn't shock me if they do really well. For sure. And also what's interesting, they have a lot of kids that are playing in North America too, whether they're playing in, um, you know, the juniors yeah. up in Canada or even playing NCAA hockey. So it's, it's a team that, has a lot of guys that have already been drafted, but I think you're going to see some other guys in this tournament that we're going to look back and say they really, really helped their draft stock. And that, that was the case last year. I think Dvorsky was the one that people didn't know about him that well, and then he played in the tournament, and then people started to notice his name. That's what happened to Slavkovsky, and that's what happened to even Simon Nemitz as well. Unknown guys going into those Olympics two years ago. 
Mm-hmm. Then they come and play in the tournament. They make a lot of noise, and all of a sudden, their draft stock skyrockets to the point where they were top two picks in the 2022 draft. So, yeah, this is a really, really good Slovakian team, a very dangerous team, not just in their group, but as Kyle mentioned, a team that could make a lot of noise when we get <laughs> to the elimination round. So let's keep our eye on what Team Slovakia does uh, in this one. So we're down to our final two teams here in Group B. And these are teams that I think are just like Germany and just like Germany where they're hoping that in the near future they are able to get a little bit more talent. Um, this team that we're about to talk about has a lot of NHL talent, specifically on the New Jersey Devils who have like <laughs> four players who all hail from this country. And that is Team Switzerland, who last year who last year finished in seventh. They are projected again to finish in seventh. They are at a plus 6,500. This is a team that has not too many – um, NHL drafted players. They have some older guys, some 2003 guys as well. And the guy that everybody wants to keep their eye on is Miles Mueller, who is uh, 19 years of age. He's actually one of the younger guys on this team, uh, currently playing in the, the uh, Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. A lot of other guys that really I like a lot. But the guy that I like the most, honestly and truly, is uh, the defenseman for Switzerland. That is Rodwin Dionit. Um, Dion Chio, uh, who is a uh, who? Funny enough, Kyle, you're gonna you're gonna find this really funny. He yeah. actually hails from Newark, New Jersey. He is an Anaheim. Oh, wow. He's actually he was born in Switz. He was born and raised in the United States in the United States, but actually has um, Switzerland citizenship. So he actually had a he had a really interesting uh, situation where he could have chose either to play for the United States or Switzerland. But I think Switzerland gives him more of an opportunity to play a lot more. And now the Anaheim Ducks, I've heard from a lot of people that are really high on this kid. So it's going to be one of those guys I think is going to be a leader on this team. Really intrigued again. Six foot two, 214 pounds. But I think overall, Kyle, when you look at this team, this is a team that maybe could get an upset. Maybe they struggle. I don't have the greatest hopes for Switzerland. I don't either. Um, they were just finishing up the game too, as uh, Switzerland did fall to the uh, to the Canadians. There, I think it was five. I'm just looking, trying to find it. So I think it was either five two or six two. Also, to quickly mention too, Macklin Celebrini got a game misconduct in this game, a five minute major and a game misconduct in this game. So we'll wait to see if there is possible suspensions coming. So breaking news a little bit. And that could actually end up being a factor when this tournament gets underway. It could it play really a factor. Could. It really could. So hopefully that that isn't the case. Um, it seems like it was just a five minute major and it was for boarding, but it looks like the IHF I think is going to look into uh, this possible uh, suspension here. Uh, I don't know who it was that he boarded, unfortunately, um, on this Swiss team. But to get back to Switzerland here for a little bit, yeah, it's they're kind of in the same realm here for me as Germany. You know, not not a ton to go for, and for me personally, it's just a lot of uphill climbing for this team when you got the likes of Slovakia and, and the Czechs and the Americans who. Are, are, are seemingly on the uprise with a lot of really good talent on this team. And not to say that they're not going to try and match it, but it, it is going to be tough sledding, I think, for uh, for Switzerland in this tournament, ultimately. This is a team that I think at best could maybe finish top three if they're able to get an upset and maybe just salvage some points. But I do think they end up finishing um, fourth. Although, like I said before we kind of preview this, that this is a what I consider to be kind of like a four-team um, battle because even with Switzerland not having the world's greatest amount of talent in this tournament, teams like that find ways to make life miserable for the top dogs. And so I, I look at it and I say they could they could do something unless they play like they played today against Team Canada. And to just specify more, Celebrini, uh, he checked Leo Braliard of Switzerland from behind on the course. Yes. That's why it led to a five minute uh, mis- and, and a game uh, misconduct. So just to Gain a little bit more context here. I've already seen that some people think that this could be a two or even three game suspension for um, for Celebrini. This was a that was about as worse of a time as you could think to do that in a game that Means no nothing. offense doesn't mean anything. It's just Means a warm night. So bad look for the top player, uh, top player for Canada, top player in next year's draft. Uh, we'll see. 
We'll see how generous or not so generous the IIHF is um, when it comes to that. But uh, if Celebrini's out to start this tournament, it's going to have an effect. I think Canada will be fine to some extent, but I also think it could play a major, even bigger effect than we realize. So let's keep yeah. an eye on, on what ends up happening with that. So we are now down to our final team and the team that a lot of people project to finish not only in dead last in, in the group, but potentially in dead last in this entire tournament. And some people argue could be the most likely team that could get relegated. And that is Norway who comes in. They, uh, they got promoted. This is a big year for them. Obviously they were able to get back into the world juniors. They are projected to finish 10th at plus 80,000. Um, so if you want to put money down on them somehow, Doing Good luck. <laughs> I will say though that if you do end up being right, which would be ridiculous, you're going to make a good amount of money off of off of Norway. One dollar. Um, <laughs> that's true. Put it put it one dollar. So you look at this Norway team, Kyle. They are the only team in in this entire tournament without a single NHL player or NHL drafted player. I might add. Yeah. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But this is the most unknown team in this tournament. And it's because we didn't see them last year. <clears throat> we don't know what they're about. Um, they have the most players with the longest names of any team. There's so many guys here with three <laughs> names. This is awesome. Wow. So, yeah. And all three of their goaltenders have three names. So Yay. there's yeah, that's great. This is going to be fun. Um I'm trying to look. Obviously, Kyle put uh, Brancic Nygaard as the player to watch uh, for this um, for this team. His actual full name is Michael Brancic Nygaard. 2005, he comes from Oslo, Norway, currently playing for hockey. Allsvenskan, which I think might be a German team or a Finnish team. I, I don't think that's the German team. I it's a German it team. So he he's playing, obviously. Where it's, So I look at this team and I say to myself, I don't know what to think. I really don't know. Um, there's some good, th 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 you know, I, I don't know. I just. Sometimes I, I it's know. with the unknown, right? Sometimes it's with the unknown that you just, you, you can't grasp it with. Um, and, you know, they, they don't have, I, I think, again, with a lot of these teams like Norway and Latvia and, and such, you know, the, the goal for them really is to stay in next year's tournament, right? And, and just right. find a way to develop and, and, and find better results with these tournaments, right? And that's ultimately how you're going to be able to develop better. Um, so, yeah, with this Norwegian team, sometimes they can surprise people, right? You don't know. But um, with this projection that they have here, it feels appropriate just because, like you mentioned, if you don't have an NHL draft pick on your, on your roster, you're going to have a bad time. Right. And uh, I I think it's going to be tough for them. Can they win a best of three against the likes of Latvia or a German team that doesn't have a complete roster this year? It's possible. It's doable. Possible. I think it can happen in a best of three. And, and you got to give them the benefit of the doubt. So, you know, do I see them making it to the medal round? I think it's ultimately going to come down to a game with them in Switzerland this year, uh, just like how we mentioned on the other side with Latvia and Germany. So um, I, I still like Switzerland's chances to get in and um, – yeah, I, I think it feels appropriate to to have uh, to have Norway where they are here. Yeah, and again, we're we're not knocking on Norway by any means. First of all, like good for them and congratulations to them that they were yep. able to get promoted to playing in the World Juniors. Um, but again, a lot of it's going to be unknown until we actually see them on the ice and they start playing. Then we'll start to get a better idea as to what they're about and everything like that. Um, I think really for them, the goal, just like with guys like Latvia as well and Germany. Um, and Switzerland to an extent is avoid relegation. I think that's really where you're at with it. I think you have to avoid it because it's tough when you like get promoted and then immediately after one year you're back down and not playing in this tournament because yeah. this tournament is so big for especially those smaller countries that don't have a lot of guys that we know about, especially like Norway, that gives – kids a chance to produce on an international stage where teams can watch them and say there might be something there and you know we'll see we'll see but i think overall um it's gonna be somewhat of a tight three to maybe four team race in group b but yeah. Kyle, what are your overall projections for uh group b for group b um i think this is the americans group to lose um this should be 
should be a first place finish in Group B for the Americans. Anything less, I think, would be a failure. And then we'll see what happens, obviously, in the medal round. I got Slovakia finishing second in this group. Mm. I really do. I love it. I, th I, I think Slovakia can, can really do something here. I like them finishing second. I got the Czechs finishing third in this group. Uh, and then I have uh, Switzerland fourth uh, getting in the medal round with Norway uh, getting to the uh, relegation best of three. Okay, and I think I would pretty much agree with that as well. I, I have the United States in first place. I do have Slovakia getting into the uh, medal rounds. I think it's going to be a lot of fun with with them. Um, and then you got, obviously, Czechia. Uh, really, again, with Slovakia and Czechia, just like with Sweden and Finland, I think you could flip you could flip a coin, honestly, because I really want to see where the experience for Czechia making that deep run last year, what it what it does for this team this year. So really curious with that. Switzerland, I have fourth. And obviously, Norway, I have battling to avoid relegation. But you never know. You never yep. know what could happen in this tournament. It's going to be a lot of fun. So with that being said, Kyle, before we wrap up this, this yep. episode, Get it in. give me your... Gold, well, give me your bronze, silver, and gold medal winners. And also, who is your tournament, um, your player of the tournament? Player of the tournament. So I'll give you fourth, too, just because it's the bronze medal game. So I'll go fourth up. So I have Sweden fourth again this year. I got Slovakia winning the bronze this year. Mm-hmm. I think it is going to be a Canada-U.S. final this year. It feels like it's going to go that way. I got the Americans winning gold this year over Canada. Um, yeah. It just feels like with the way that these rosters are constructed, I look at those two teams, I think that they're more well-rounded. I think there's a lot of other question marks with a lot of these other teams like Sweden and Finland. Um, I And, hey, we'll see what happens with Celebrini now all of a sudden with Canada. But I like the Americans to win gold so much this year. And I think the player to – the player of the tournament, I'm going to go with the guy that we had on the U.S. there, and it's going to be Cutter Gochi. I, I think it's his coming out party. I think he's highly touted specifically going into this tournament, and uh, and I think it's going to be his coming out party, and the, and the Flyers will love him that much more. I think the Flyers will get a lot of love if Cutter Gauthier ends up being the main guy of this tournament. I think it'll just yeah. make that first round, because we praised the Flyers for what they did in that first round in, in general. They have a deep give it time like especially with how well they've been playing this year oh, yeah. another year or two it's a very scary flyers team moving forward i think the only question for me has got to be the future with carter hart if he's going to be here or no i think he ends up staying but you know anything sure. can happen so i'm gonna go with this i'm gonna go with finland to finish fourth that's okay. that's what i'm gonna go i'm going to have uh canada finishing third I, yes, because I have the United States against Slovakia in the gold oh medal game. Gosh. That's what I'm going for. I think it's going to be a Group B party for the gold medal. I'm going to have the United States beat Slovakia. I think it's going to be an overtime game. I think we're going to get that type of drama in that overtime. I think like 3 2, 2 to 1. It's going to be awesome. And I think so. I'm going to go United States winning the gold. Slovakia is going to get the silver. Canada's going to get gold, uh, bronze, and then in fourth place you have Finland. Because again, I just feel like that Finland is a little bit better than Sweden, in my opinion. Okay. Just based off of the talent that they have coming into this um, this tournament, and I think the pressure for Sweden of playing in their backyard is going to affect them to some some degree. I think it's going to play a part. So that that's that's what I'm going with. I, I make love it. I make weird predictions all the time, but – and then <laughs> I'm going to give you a hot take. I think a goaltender is going to be the player of this tournament. And I'm going to go with Sam Hilbrat to be the player of the tournament because every year in this tournament, there is at least one goaltender that really stands on his head. And the one that stands out to me recently was uh, Devin Levi. When mm -hmm. he played for Team Canada – he nobody knew who he was until he got into the world juniors and played really well. And everybody was like, who is this kid? And granted, like he's been struggling a bit with the, the Sabres right now. I get it, but he's still a very young future, you know, top talented goaltender. Um, and so I look at Sam Hillbride. He is, remember he has not been drafted yet. He is going to be eligible this upcoming summer um, for the draft. 
I think he ends up taking the reins for the United States. And uh, I think he makes a really good put. And I think it's going to like not maybe not skyrocket, but certainly increase his draft stock a lot. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with that. So that's my prediction. So Kyle, we're in for a really fun tournament as we always are every year. There's excitement around it every year. It's a lot of fun. This is going to be great. A lot of morning and early afternoon games. So if you, if you just happen to be working from home by any chance, well, you got something, you got a, you got, some sporting events to watch. You can watch all of the games on NHL Network. Um, also, I think in Canada, TSN. Correct. Is it just TSN or is Sportsnet also? It, I believe it's just TSN. Just TSN. And then I'm sure that there are channels in Europe that I don't know about that will be showing it in some degree. But here in North America, obviously. yeah, right. Here in North America, you do have, you do have your options. And also – you have another option, and that is to check out the live watch longs that we will be doing right here on THP and YouTube channel, doing as many of the games as possible. We'll obviously be doing the bronze and gold medal games as well. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. Looking forward to it. And uh, Kyle, man, thank you so much for joining us on this World Juniors uh, special of NHL Weekly. We're doing two episodes this week. We're giving. I'm trying to make up for the one episode that I couldn't do because I was under the weather, but um, really excited for this. And I hope you guys are ready and uh, getting ready to hop on the ride because it's going to be a lot of fun for the next couple of weeks. So on that note, that will wrap it up for us here on this edition of NHL Weekly. As always, thank you guys so much for checking it out. Make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time a new episode of NHL Weekly does uh, appear. Um, also go check out the playlist of all of the episodes of NHL weekly that you may have missed as well. And give a like to that as well. I saw a bunch of likes, I think yesterday that just popped up out of nowhere. So we are, uh, we are certainly making our, oh. making our way here. So make sure to also, again, if you get punched that notification bell, you'll get notified also of live watch alongs that come on and all the other content that we have. Make sure to follow us over on Instagram and also on X at HockeyPodNet. You can follow my personal Twitter at the NVP show. And Kyle, if you want to promote your your own uh, your own yes. Twitter. Fine. Uh, it's so you'll you'll see it. You'll, you'll you'll see it pop up on social as well. And you can follow <laughs> Kyle as well. It's all it's all good. But uh, again, we will be back. I will be back either on Monday or later in the week, depending on um, t- Monday will actually be Christmas Day, so I do want to say I hope everyone has a happy holiday and everyone oh. enjoys themselves. Kai, I know you will. You got the Christmas tree in the background, so it's all good. But again, thank you so much for checking out this episode of NHL Weekly, and we will see you in the next episode. Everyone, again, have an absolutely happy holidays. Enjoy this World Junior Championships, and as always, make sure to rock on.